Well, anyway, hello, internet. Let's get some... I think you guys all should be good to talk, right? Just make sure you're... I'm talking. Great. I'm talking. That's perfect. All right, so we're good. It was just everybody was being super quiet, and it threw me off. Uh, <laughs> so hello, internet. Welcome to Horde of the Dragon Queen number 12. We are back with the good working not fuzzy cameras. How about that? Second week in a row. A little more work on the upfront to start it up, but I think it looks way better. Um, so, before we jump into this, first of all, let's get our, our recap music here going in the background. There we go. Very low, but we'll get that going. I just wanted to give you guys a couple of announcements and some kind of stuff that's going on. So, first of all, thank you to Miss Light Nevea for reworking this overlay. For the meantime, while we have only three players, so we don't have that one extra just blank spot on the far right. So, Light, we appreciate that. So, thank you. You're welcome. Um, also, for doing the new BRB screen, which some of you may have seen on social media. If not, you'll see when we take our break a little bit later on. So, thank you again it's for that beautiful. as well. Love it. Um, there is, possibly, uh, it's in talks, so we'll see. But I think a fairly good chance we will have... A new fourth player for not this game but starting the next game in two weeks from now on the 29th I believe we'll see how that goes so be on the lookout for that um, yes light you get to make another PRB screen <laughs> uh, just keeping you busy so that's good uh, also I did want to point out that we now I haven't updated the commands list yet but because the girls have been hounding me to do this, hounding, I don't know what that was about, me to do this for a while, there are now three new commands in the chat. It is exclamation point, the name of the three characters you see here, exclamation point, Odella, Roswin, and Lux individually, that will link, hopefully, if the link works, which we can test out now, it will link you to their characters like a musical playlist to kind of give you guys a little bit more insight into their characters in musical form so ideally those all work and i'll leave it to you guys to check that out so um yeah that's just one extra little thing we added more recently um so uh the only other thing that's left uh, is soon-ish, maybe by next game, if I'm ambitious, we will uh, have a the Obsidian Portal link. We'll put it out more globally public to you guys. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Obsidian Portal, it is a website that is essentially, I guess I'd say like a Wikipedia almost. It's like a fan-based kind of Wikipedia where you can create this for your own campaign and it's a campaign tracker you put in um you can track your adventures you can track npcs lore any kind of thing you want basically it is your own customizable wikipedia and i've started one for this game i'm going to be doing one for my the homebrew coming up after uh out of the abyss ends but i've been working behind the scenes to get it and i think we're at a spot where we can probably thanks to some assistance from the ladies here, specifically Laura, who's been recapping my uh, all the previous adventures for us, writing out summaries, which is a long and arduous process. Sometimes to make up for that, uh, a staff made out of sky metal falls from the sky to your character to help out for that. So, you know, things like that happens. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so be on the lookout for that by next game. I think... That handles all of my announcements. Did any of you guys have anything going on that you wanted to put out there before we kind of roll into it? Um, well... Yeah, you were saying something before, Light. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to be streaming a lot more soon. Um, I'm just... I just got whitelisted to a TTA RP, which is Grand Theft Auto. Um on RP first, so I'm super excited to actually work with a whole bunch of people, um, a lot of different streamers and stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see, uh, right now I think first character I'm going to be playing is some biker chick, um, so that's going to be interesting and hopefully I'll get to be a cop later. 
we'll see what happens. Um, just super excited because it's um, right now that's a big thing on on Twitch at the moment. So yeah, it'll be fun. It is. It's kind of surprising in my mind to be honest with you, but hey, yeah, it is uh, what yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right now, role play is just struggling. It's it's uh, it's either Ark. Conan kind of died out. Mm -hmm. Like she just died. So right now it's Ark and GTA. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, Laura, Katie, anything to announce to talk about? Yes, no. This salad's really good. I anticipated. I I figured when I brought that up, there was like a ninety percent chance that Katie's announcement was going to be food related. I love food. <laughs> All right. Well. That being said, why don't we recap what happened last time? So, our ladies are in the town of Elturel. They decided to play in the Elturel games. Um, one, it's a nice to get a little bit of a break, but two, they were waiting for an important meeting, uh, which is where we're going to roll into right when we start today, but I do think it's worth mentioning Roswin and Odella's performance in the horseback riding competition, which was down to the wire. Uh, they won a lovely set of adamantine barding for a warhorse, of which none of them have, and Rosmond can't wear metal armor. So, you know, useful. Uh, and Lux won an arm, lost an arm wrestling competition, but won an arm wrestling competition, and came very close to winning a wrestling competition. But sometimes... You know, it doesn't always work out for your heroes. It's, it is how it is. What it is. Oh, and Roswin almost won a drinking competition against Mr. T, but uh, made it to the last very end and then lost, unfortunately. Well, you can't win them all. No. And our bard Phoenix played an epic, sad song followed by an uplifting beat, and then sort of walked off into the sunset with a half orc bagpipist bard off on their own set of adventures and we will be joining the remainder of the belladonnas as they set out to join anthar Froom and leosin erlenthar at a non-discriminate location in the evening and i need to get some different music because this is a little bit too upbeat so where's phoenix Mm. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you're still drowsy, right? Or are you just coming out of drowsiness? Yeah, she's she's like fifty percent mentally there and I was, where's where is she? we she's gotta come to the meeting too. Um I'm worried. Yeah. Where, where are we right now? Um well, I think when we technically ended, you guys were heading there, but we can rewind, or like you were basically there, but we can rewind a little bit. You guys were heading to this meeting location uh, in the seedier part of town. Yeah. I uh, quickly just scan around to see, like, for a bench or something. Do I yeah. see a bench? Yeah, there's a place you can sit down. So, um, I think we should sit down. Well, and, we can't uh, be late. That's fine. We... We have some time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Walking's hard anyway. And yeah. it's bright. It's I, I, it's I just go ahead. But it's bright. <laughs> I just go ahead and I just like lift her up. It's like in my arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, just get over there. To set her down. Okay. <clears throat> Roslyn? Lux? I know. I have been friends. Well, you've been closer to Phoenix, mm -hmm. and we've noticed how she's changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, uh, she did sing a song about us. It was wonderful. I wish you were there to hear it. But she basically looked at us, and she knew she had to go. And she left with someone. Who? Do you know them? Is she safe? 
Do we have to go find her? Because no, we can I, find I believe, her. I believe she will be safe. It was another magician, um, which I actually arm wrestled him. Uh, you did? Yeah. And, but, I really think she needs, she needs to find herself. Ever since, ever since, you, you know, Ava left, she's been different. And she needs tell her tales. She needs to sing. She needs to find herself. Okay. If that's what she's gotta do, then we can't help her. And maybe that guy can. Or whoever. I don't know. I don't always. It's not always easy to help everybody, I guess. I mean, she is older than us. Doesn't matter. I don't doubt that she will continue our tale. Yeah. And I give her a hug. She just kind of blimply leans in. Well, yes, let's go. All right. Can you stand up? Yeah, I can. I can do anything. No. So I get up and <laughs> she wobbly stands up <laughs> and just kind of like curves to the left a little bit. And she's do you, like, do you want me to forward. help you? <laughs> no, I can do anything. Okay. <laughs> and then yeah, we uh, start walking towards where we have to go. Okay. Uh, so you guys make your way towards this smaller kind of it's you're weaving through a couple of back streets to a smaller portion of the town and there is like a nondescript dark from the outside interior like house small little house and there are two people um with in cloaks with hoods up kind of just on you know on either side arms crossed on either side of the door and they see the three of you some more stumbly than others working your way towards the door and they both without really kind of lifting their hoods just kind of nod to the three of you and then one reaches over and kind of opens the door and the other gestures you guys inside i'm gonna be alert as i can be while i enter this place okay um do you so you guys enter then i'm, I'm guessing yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you guys end up walking okay. in, and it is fairly dark in here. Not unlike this little image I managed to grab here. Um, that is the background, the map, as it were. Uh, and you guys work your way. Although this is much brighter than the actual room you're in. This is we're talking like lanterns, but like a really low uh, flickering lights. And this is about the best music I could find. So this is what we're going to go with, and uh, you guys see at a table, and after you guys, you know, one of the guys kind of followed you guys in to make sure you're going where you're supposed to go, and after he kind of asked, you guys have made your way towards where Leosin and Antar are, he kind of nods to them and then heads back out the way you guys came, and they're both sitting at the table, and they gesture to uh, the three chairs opposite the table in front of you. I sit down. Yeah, okay. Roswin. Yep. Sits down. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Leo says hello, and this is the first time you guys have seen him in a while since uh, he gave you the advice that uh, he didn't think there was any way the cult of the dragon would be leaving. Uh, there, there's no way they're going to leave. They're going to be there for a while. Leo's in, they were all gone. All of them, except for like, like, ten in the cave. They were all, not a, it was, nobody was outside. Camp, gone. And he kind of, you know, seems to nod knowingly to the three of you, and he says, I am, well, I'm sorry that my advice wasn't, uh, 
wasn't accurate. However, uh, the fact that we managed to secure this place is, is good news. And the fact that the th well, three, I thought there were four of you. And there was, but I think she doing a uh, self-reflection on herself, so it's just us three. This is Odella. And he looks over to you, Odella, and puts out his hand, and he says, well, it's very nice to meet you. She puts out her hand. Very nice to meet you as well. And um, he says, well, the reason we've called you here in the, this kind of clandestine uh, setting is, as we mentioned, or as you may have heard, and he again looks to Odella in this moment, that... We cannot be too sure who's listening. So we've taken great care that whatever we say here will be self-contained to the members in this room. So we know the Cult of the Dragon is amassing treasure. We've seen and you have seen remnants of them ransacking various towns and settlements and seemingly not caring what happens to the people but just gathering the treasure and then they're shipping it north we don't know why we don't know where it's going so that is what we've called the three of you here for we have heard tale that there's a caravan the one that left the greenest or greenest rather i should say greenest and that raider camp and has been traveling, traveled west and is now heading north along the Sword Coast. And they will be in the city of Baldur's Gate in, ah, well, in the near future. Our plan is to have the three of you perform reconnaissance, join up with this caravan, get yourselves entrenched in what's going on, and follow them to their end goal figure out what this is for and where it's going but i stress to you it is a reconnaissance mission we do not want them to know that you're working for any of the associated factions harper's three points order of the gauntlet to anthar emerald enclave just figure out what's going on and we'll have associates to meet you somewhere down the road and we'll get this information back but it's important we have no idea this is unprecedented the cult of the dragon was for decades obsessed with the creation and finding of draco liches in the far east now they're here in the west amassing treasure and seeking out living dragons and it's just well it's very unsettling, and we need to know why. So, uh, he says, the intel that we've heard from you so far, and what we've heard from our scouts out in the field, is that they'll be in Baldur's Gate 20, 30 days from now, potentially. Did you... In your time spent in that camp, did you find anything else of import that may help us narrow this time frame down at all? Well, there, well, I did see these bodies. I don't know. I don't know if this has anything to do with that, but they're doing some weird stuff. Because they were like these bodies with these bursts from their stomachs, and and then there were these really sad-looking dracoliches, and that's really what I focused on. Because dracoliches, you saw undead dragons. No, I saw. Drakes. Oh, oh so... <sighs> those are very, <laughs> very different creatures. Yes, they are. And he goes, well, let's... And what of... What of Frula Mondath, the supposed leader of that camp? She's dead. 
Well, unfortunately, we won't be able to question her then. If only... Were there, was there anything... Did you find any documents or, or correspondence? Anything we can use to help in any way? Don't you guys have a diary? Did we have that or did Phoenix have that? <laughs> <laughs> we can say that you guys have it if you don't know. Okay, yeah, because I think she gathered the all the documents and the diary off the table. Oh. All right. Do you? We'll hand those over. Okay. That we totally have. So he goes. Phoenix would have left it with us if she knew she was leaving, right? Yeah, we'll say that for sure. Uh, so Leosin will say, "Well, let me take a look. and he takes that from you, and he kind of starts flipping through that, and he kind of gestures to Anthar, and he goes." Ladies, the river Scyanthar runs directly here from Altarel to the city of Baldur's Gate. I've arranged for a vessel to take you down the river and get you right there. It should take around three days with the rest at night. Set to leave tomorrow morning, early at dawn. And he pulls out three kind of pouches, and he goes for travel. And he hands you each, and you kind of look through it. I mean, Lux, you kind of just feel it, and you're like, "Oh, I know that this is fifty gold pieces." So mm -hmm. he gives you guys each fifty gold, and he goes suggest you take time and get a costume change can hide your when well, he kind of looks at Roswell he goes I mm, while well, looking not like yourself if there's gonna be cultists they may recognize you you might want to hide things try and maybe a hood or something that's one tall hood, mister. Guys, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> it's like... can give you a beehive. <laughs> just around the horns? Yeah. <laughs> you guys, very, I'm just... Very rat queen style? Yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, wow, it would be ideal. Because if there's... I mean, you're very striking group I mean except for you you look like a normal human lady he points at Odella because she doesn't have fiery red hair and wears a bikini all the time so it's isn't like six feet tall and also didn't fight half of the cult you know yes, but I look very normal <laughs> because it's just you don't have to I, I'm just suggesting for no, you might be you might be right but she just looks at Lux, too, just as she'd look at him, like, what the heck am I supposed to do with all of it? I, I, I just pat, <laughs> you know, on, like, on, on the shoulder. Don't. He goes, Don't we have, we have the evening. You leave at dawn. He goes, I can get. If you need equipment, clothing, maybe weapons, something. I got you. Well, I need something that is a French wig, even though we don't know what French is. <laughs> because French, <laughs> but sounds crazy. Yeah, I think they're gonna make fries. It's gonna be big. Don't know what those are, but I like it. <laughs> Well, I just don't know how I'm going to hide myself, but I guess I could just put a whole bunch of flowers on my head. It'll look really normal. Because Jess is food for thought. Well, do you have anything? Because I, I, I mean, we can get you cloaks and clothes, maybe. He kind of looks at you and goes, hair dye, maybe? 
Mm, I, oh. I narrowed my eye. It goes, oh, yeah. or, or a wig, maybe. Uh, <laughs> um, and he goes, but like, mm -hmm. if you need. Don't dye your hair. If you, if you, if you need. Her eye. <laughs> like, oh, God. Provisions, whether to be rope or, or food, or, you oh, know, arrows. What kind of weapons? Well, I mean, I don't think you think anyone's gonna use a bow, can we? Well, you can. Actually, can. you you can. can. Uh, you can. You can use all martial weapons. You're just not. It's mm -hmm. it's dex based. So, I goes oh, javelins maybe. Um, but yeah, it would be you would use your dexterity plus your proficiency. So it'd be I don't know. Five if your dex is a three, which I think it is. Yeah. So you'd have a plus five. You could, I mean, he could bite you. Like he said, he'd get you javelins if he wants. So you have... He does, he's not basically saying, like, oh my god, I have all these super secret magic things that I just have, like, here's my magic case. What would you like? But more, like, yeah, if you need any kind stuff. of mundane stuff, yeah. So. Oh, Katie's cat must be doing something cute. I guess so, huh? I'm listening. Uh -huh. That's just too good. So, um, um, <laughs> while you guys, while Anthar is discussing this with you, uh, Leosin kind of leans forward with the book, the diary, and the paperwork, and he says, well, this diary, well, this is just basically a love story about her and Cyanrath and a lot of sweaty dragon love, so I'm, we don't need that. Um... Odell's face just looks horrified. <laughs> and Draconic, I just say it like, yeah. Horrified. Mm -hmm. And Draconic is like, I have, it was, it's He goes, testing. you, you can, <laughs> you guys can keep this. Uh, and I've already he, got a horse sex book. I'm okay. I don't need this. <laughs> uh, Are you he, positive you don't need it? I don't need it. Let's see. He throws it in the trash bin and secret flames <laughs> all right so destroyed uh but he says but these these papers the correspondence here i believe we've narrowed down the time frame based on this and our agents in the field corroborating these two i'm saying somewhere in the 10 to 15 days they'll be arriving in Baldur's gate you guys taking this vessel that anthar has procured for you will get you there to Baldur's Gate in three days. And it is along the river, which is fairly uneventful, so you shouldn't have much to worry about between here and there. So that'll give you anywhere between 10 and 12 days or so. Eight and, you know, 10, yeah, about 10 to 12 days by the time you reach Baldur's Gate before the caravan should arrive. So that should give you uh, enough time to, if there's any additional provisions you need, and to, uh, work on thoughts for a cover potentially um you know if we're doing like recon i could just like put a bush on my head so that i really blend in with the surroundings no oh <laughs> anthar at that goes i like it you, you crazy you just it's great he goes but i know a guy his name is akin salaban he's in can you spell that? <laughs> yeah, I can. It's, can you use that in a sense? He goes, Akin Salban is a traitor. Not a traitor, a traitor. A human traitor. He makes, he sells, buys and sells things. Um, but anyway, I'll spell it out for you. It's uh, uh, A C K Y N S E L E B O N. Cool. Uh, so he uh, he says uh, he makes wagons and things. And chat with him; he'll get you in contact with other people. He's a good guy. Tell him, Anthar sent you. Anthar from Anthar. I feel like I had some good stories to tell you. But I don't remember them. 
crazy. You lie. You you're crazy. I saw the drinking. The what? When you drinking. I was drinking. Yeah. And he looks at like, looks at Odella and Loxy goes. Well, what? She drank a lot. Yeah, she ah. doesn't remember. Ah, wow. Truly crazy. Oh, crazy Roz. Oh, crazy Roz. <laughs> That's what they call me. Because if they don't, they should. It's a name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Leosin says again to you guys, uh, well, I have also, um, we've cleared this with the folks on the vessel uh, to help you as you are going to be joining a caravan. It will be a selling point in your favor if you were to have your own mounts to accompany this caravan. So, myself and the Harpers have managed to procure the three of you uh, mounts to take to Baldur's Gate. However, upon arrival there, I will let you know, uh, no animals are allowed within the city walls of Baldur's Gate, no pack animals of any kind, to keep the streets clear as it is fairly tight corners, and that does allow for, um, I guess, more window shopping, as it were, uh, and that will help drive the merchants. So the vessel will cart your mounts around from the south gate to the north gate. Uh, so they are, they'll be, they're waiting out back, and he points out kind of a back door that you guys didn't really see before. Heading out the other side of the bar. And he goes, uh, But to Anthar's point, if you have anything that you require as you are going to be leaving at, at dawn, um, if there's anything while you're here in a safe space that you need us to procure for you for your travel, uh, we can send uh, couriers to bring that back here. We should probably get more rope. You can never have enough rope. All right, rope. We can do rope. that. Silk rope. It's so, better. Uh, uh, all right, silk, silk rope. Yes, okay. <laughs> do you have a footage in mind, Crazy Roz? Mm, like, like, fifth, like your standard fitty. We got those fitty. Like this one. It's got spunk. <laughs> um. Can you sell something for us? He goes. Wow. I guess. Why? It's kind of hard to carry around. Yes, we need to sell something. And then uh, Leo says, as well, I, I, I mean, we can... Sure, if there's... Do you need us to purchase something with the, the funds gained? Uh, what, what, what do you need us to sell for you? Uh, there's a, a set of uh, barding that we happen to win in the games. It's a adamantine plate mail barding for a war horse. I'm not sure that it'll come in handy for us, so it's a little heavy to carry around, even for Lux. But um, also, I'm not sure if you know of anybody in town who sells any magic items and would be able to find something late at night, but if it, I, I know that there's a spell that you can change your appearance. I don't know if anybody has any sort of item that does that. Mm. He says, well, I, I don't... So I don't know of any... I mean, I personally haven't seen anything of, uh, like that here in Elturel. You may have better luck in Baldur's Gate. There is a, uh, uh, a shop that goes by the name of Sorceress Sundries. They do sell all manner of arcane... Uh, from arcane spell components to spell scrolls to a smattering of magic items whenever the traders come through the city. You may have better luck there. Okay, then we'll just take the money. And he goes, all right. He goes, I will tell you, one of the horses we procured for you was a war horse. For your strapping friend. And he points to Lux, because she is significantly larger than the two of you. <laughs> you are very strapping, Lux. It looks good on you. 
Thanks. But <laughs> even after that, we're, we're not hmm? needed. Yeah, I mean, we're only going to go all the way there and then. And he so. just, they, they, they look expectantly for the rest of Roswin's sentence. <laughs> and then we can't take the horse in. I think that goes without saying. You just said it. <laughs> right, but to your point, or to my point earlier, they will be waiting for you on the north side of the gate where the caravan will leave from the city. Hey, look, look. We are very comfortable on our feet. So basically we just want to sell it. Okay, so he will, then we will send someone to go sell it. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, he, they, you guys have a couple of hours in this cold, dark bar with Anthar and Leosin while their couriers run around to go uh, sell your stuff for you. So, if there's anything you would like to discuss with them, you're more than welcome to. Antar? Yes? What kind of accent is that? Where are you from? Oh, where do we want to make him from? Some place that you guys are never going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, well, I grew up in the Dale, in the Dale lands to the east, because my mother and father, they spoke very slowly. So, I have learned to speak the same way. It's not really a traditional accent. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were done. Me either. Oh, Della no, was just sitting there like, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I am, I'm good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna announce the rest of this, this apparent drinking off. Is there anyone else that we're supposed to, that we should meet with other than, um, Akin? He goes, well, Akin, well, this caravan is going to go somewhere, we don't know. But your best bet would be probably to go as some sort of merchant or god. Akin. I'm sorry, god? Yeah, God, you know, you know what I'm, do you not hear the words coming from my mouth? No, I, you said God? I mean, if you think you can pull it off. <laughs> I'm so confused. He goes, someone who protects a caravan. Oh, a guard. That's what I said, a guard. Oh. It goes, well, well, you know, you take that. Aki. Don't call him Aki. He doesn't like that. I can call him, because we're friends. Well, Aki. He'll hook you up with the right folks. Then, prove you can be a god or a merchant. Should be easy to find that road north. Oh, I do need one more thing. I totally forgot. I'm sorry. I need parchment and something to write with. Uh, and Leo Sin will just basically pull from behind the bar, like, a sheaf of parchment and a quill. Okay, thank you. And she's going to sit in the corner and just start writing. Okay. Um, yeah, Leo Sin will say... Uh, we may have an additional uh i have to see where the uh who we have in the field we may try to get someone to help assist you on this caravan ride north uh 
more eyes and more hands. We thought we were going to have four that potentially let you get hired out to four separate caravans to disband a little bit of suspicion, get a little bit of information from various folks. Um, we'll have to see. But we may have uh, someone who's been kind of traveling along with them, able to join you. But we'll let you know. Well, and he kind of looks to you, Odell, and he goes, you'll know when you see them. Okay. Can I insight check to see if they know each other? Because he keeps looking at her. Well, you're off in the corner writing. Well, he was doing it before, even when I was over there. I guess you can tr I'll give it to you with disadvantage now, because you're in the corner writing. And you're also still kind of drunk. And everybody seems to be friendly when you're coming down from... Was it a 12? Um, uh, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, you guys really believed him last time when he said there was no way the Cult of the Dragon was going to be gone from the camp. And that ended up being... It wasn't a lie, per se, but he was wrong. Okay. So... Yeah. No, uh... Not sure. So... Mud Puppy, you better hope it's not Ava. That's gonna get a little crazy. <laughs> if that were to happen. It's Laura-ception with her characters. Yeah, I just really want to put Laura in a lot of awkward social situations where she has to play two characters. <clears throat> Which would be even more awkward because if Ava was like just see, meeting Odella that she would be hitting on her the entire time. <laughs> yep. And then you get to hit on yourself. We'll just have to get you better. we'll just have to get you like like a hat or something to distinguish one character from the other so you could be like put on the fedora when you're Ava and then take it off to be Odella and then like you know something yep. like that. Yep. Um so yeah, is there anything else you guys wanted to go over questions you wanted to ask before uh, the couriers finish up for the night and get you on your way. Is there anything in particular that would be the most normal for us to be selling as merchants if that's what we go with? Well, Leo Sin will say there, there will be. He goes, well, it's hard to say as this is a caravan. Um, we know the Cult of the Dragon will be there in some capacity. I'm sure any caravan heading north, there will be folks joining on from within the city of Baldur's Gate. Um, but if you don't have really carts, a cart and horses to pull it, it may be a little harder to pass yourself off as a merchant, as you would probably be hawking your wares at some further north city. Uh, so do we need to buy a court, uh, cart to put on the back of our animals he goes i mean you wouldn't have to if you did then you would also need to have some sort of a front for wares you would be selling and upon further thought i mean if you want to go that route you can but it may just be easier to try to go with a guard or, or a protector of some kind and he kind of looks at at lux and he goes i doubt that uh you will have any uh any difficulty passing yourself off as some sort of guard or protector of one of these wagons and he says he may again you also probably talk to some of the folks there and see what they're doing maybe you can maybe uh maybe you can work your way in with a different angle but it, you really won't know until we see who's going there i'd probably recommend trying to not get in on one of the cult carts unless you're feeling particularly reckless or very confident in yourself to try to pass yourself off as a guard for the people were trying to not let them know we're there. So maybe go for someone else. Okay. You know, if we wanted to pretend like we were going to sell ponies, I've been noticing they've been following me around all over the place. As well, I <laughs> No, mean... no, stupid idea. Never mind. It'd be fun, though. A lot, well... <laughs> <laughs> crazy Roz! It's crazy! Okay. 
All right. Well, if you guys don't have anything else that you want to ask or anything you want to say, uh, then we'll jump to the morning. Um, did you guys, you only wanted to sell the barding. That was all for what you wanted to take care of here in the city this evening, right? You weren't, were you picking up anything else? I mean, there's nothing else in the city, right? I mean, so... there's any and mundane stuff, you know. Yeah. Mm. Seems like her money has been saying that we'd have better luck finding cool stuff at Baldur's Gate. True. Uh, you do get your you get the fifty feet of silk and rope. I don't know who wants it, but you have it. Um, Rosman really wanted it. She really did. Rosman, you have fifty feet of silk rope you can put down on your character sheet. Well, you know, I can fly places, so if we need to tie something off, sure. it's all me. Okay. Um So that's fine. Uh and you guys end up getting for the barding. Let's see how much I'm going to actually give you guys. Uh, 6k. You guys will get haggling late in the evening with some hooded figures. I'll give you guys 1500 each for the barding. You still got to sell it back and make a profit, things like that. So. Rosman, do you want me to take your share for the party? Do you need it? If you need it, you can have it. I think, I think you know, I need it for now, but if you need anything, just let me know. I will give you some some of that money. Okay. Here, take take this 52. Cool. And I kind of look at, like, Lux, like, you know what I'm doing, right? Like, I'm not trying to steal her money. <laughs> yeah. They're just waiting for that okay. bar where Roswin asks for information and is like, what will this get me? 1,500 gold. <laughs> Oh, okay. And the guy's like, whatever you want. You let me know. <laughs> Your soul. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, tapping into that tiefling heritage. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, you guys will rest for the evening. Um, oh, as you walk out, uh, you will see two riding horses and a war horse. Um, kind of in the stables back there that are yours to take with full bit bridle, you know. Um, saddles and everything good to go um, for you guys to head out with uh, tomorrow morning at dawn okay uh, I'm gonna oh and and my horse and I forgot Leosin also tells you that uh, you are free to name them whatever you wish they have not been named I feel like he knows us Hmm. What does Wait, what my horse look, look like? like? Yeah, what this is like? important. <laughs> I, how did I know? How did I know? Or like, can we pick which horse we want? I don't know if me and Roswell are gonna fight over which horse we're getting. Yeah, fine. Uh, I'm not gonna sit there and just start pulling horse names and, and horse, you know, uh, patterns <laughs> out of the air. So. Do you guys have an idea in mind for the type of horse you'd like to have? Lux, yours is a war horse. I'm not going to say it has to be like a Clydesdale, but it's a bigger horse that, you know, could stomp somebody's face if it needed to. But what it looks like, I leave that up to the three of you to decide. Go nuts. Thank you. And now the, the stream will pause for 15 minutes while they figure this out. No, I know. I already I know have the exact horse. breed of the horse. All right. But me good. too. I want one of the ones that are like the kind of like tan caramel color with the white spots and then the lighter hair. I would like, like a palomino. Yeah, I was yeah say like a palomino. That's what I was looking for. I want a palomino, and I'm going to name it Poppy, like the flower. Okay, Poppy the palomino. I'm happy with my choice. Max. Uh, I take an Appaloosa. Okay. So it looks like, but like not the ones where it's like an all one color with like the spots on the butt. I want it like all spots. So it looks like a Dalmatian horse. Okay. I'm going to name it Spot. <laughs> is it black and white or is it? I put a link in the. Oh, I didn't actually place. click it. Let me check. Sorry. Important stuff, guys. There you go. Dalmatian horse chat. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, mine's basically, if you remember the Budweiser commercial, 
Mm-hmm. It's the color. Yep. Sure. Clydesdale. Clydesdale. Yep. Got it. All right. Yep. There you go. How about you got a I name? Went, you went Clydesdale over Frisian. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, I named the horse she it's it's basically uh shisha okay i'm gonna like seesaw but yep. shisha <laughs> all right it, it's a meaning for something. all right well there we go you got your horses and we're fast forward through the evening unless there are things you guys would like to do now that you're back in the place where you're staying before the morning comes Mm, I'm good. I just water hell yeah. Okay. All right. Then the morning comes. It is you guys manage to wake up. Uh, Roswin, your hangover miraculously gone. You slept most of it off though, so you should be fine. Although that was a lot of sugary water to drink. I still <laughs> love rosé. Yeah. I mean, because you forgot most of it, so you mm-hmm. know. Um, okay, so it is, I'll say you guys are able to get up probably about a half hour before dawn, still get in, I mean, I don't think anybody, if you've used any of your resources, uh, spells or otherwise, you have all of that back, you're fully healed, no levels of exhaustion, um, you're able to get yourself a breakfast that's somewhat hearty, it's a little bit chilly here in the morning, um, and you guys are able to make your way by dawn to this vessel um that uh on the uh, right there on the river that Anthar had told you guys about so you guys get there is it a nice looking vessel it is it is i mean it's meager um and the river isn't like a, it's not like a it's not like a crazy river you know what i mean like you could maybe fit this vessel pretty much takes up the majority of the channel on either side. Um, it's not, you know, you get the feeling that just based on the size, it's not like this isn't, you know, a super used path. And, you know, everybody, it's pretty much just like you're probably taking the ship here from El Terrell to Baldur's Gate because Baldur's Gate's on the coast. It's more of a, uh, a hub. And then they'll probably have horses drag the, uh, the vessel back up to Alterel and it's almost like a ferry so um, but it is big enough to fit the three of you and three mounts as well as well as the crew um and you guys are able to set sail at first light and yeah um it's pretty boring uh but I do have different music so I'll change the music but for the most part the travel is just kind of like meh it's I'm going a quick. Time. I prep to speak with animals, and I'm I talking had, to Poppy. I had a feeling. Hang oh, on. you let's, know what? I do the same thing. Let's get some. <laughs> do the same thing. Oh wait, I can't. I'll, no. I'll say, I'll I'll say. Is there anything you'd like me to say to your horse for you? Uh, An that, introduction. That he's beautiful, and I love him. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, oh. DM, what did the horse say in response? I'm sorry. I uh, was working on songbird music. You know, my, my ambient morning songbird track to play in the background here. Because I spent about, like, three hours just naming every single song, or, like, track so that I'd have quick access to things. All right. So whose horse were you talking to? I'm sorry. Um, I was talking to Spot, and I was like, Spot, I just want you to know um, that the human that you've al- allowed to ride you wants you to know that you're super beautiful, and she's honored to be a rider. Oh, man, i got to come up with horse voices. I, okay. I had the thought that I was going to do this ahead of time, because I knew this was going to end up happening. Obviously. Yeah, I know. It's a problem. We just spent three days talking to horses and brushing their coats. <laughs> Poppy, what's your favorite color? <laughs> uh, all right, so fine, we can do this. So Spot, Spot is just like, yeah, it's 
great. He says, yes, it is great. You are also so beautiful. <laughs> is the spell still up? Because, or well, I guess you're technically speaking in common, so yeah, it can't. Yeah, speaking in common. So, uh, hmm, horses are. How intelligent is a horse? Let's find out whether it can understand. Because you know, dogs can understand when you say things. Mm -hmm. So can horses. So, yeah, intelligence of two. I'm pretty smart. He goes. He goes. Two? Oh, plus two. No, okay. just two. Uh, oh, that's not smart. Listen, that's smarter than some other animals out there. So, uh, he goes, Hey man, I didn't say that. That last part? You putting words in my mouth? Uh, is she not beautiful? He goes, that's not what I asked. This oh man, I, I got a I'm salty just voice. saying, I yeah. got a salty voice. <laughs> Are you mad? Are you mad that I'm making you sound more exciting? It's... Don't sass me. Listen, you come over here talking to me. I'm just, just saying. Just say what I say. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. The whole time, because I can, I can hear. This oh yeah, you hear all of this as, as this is going on, Lux. You hear that the horse is just like, hey man. Yeah, horse angst. It's, it's big. Rosman just side eyes him. And she looks at Odell and she's just like, "Your horse is not my kind of horse." <laughs> and walks over to Poppy and goes, "You are very beautiful, and I love you already." Oh, did you ask? You asked. I'm sorry, that happened, and then you asked Poppy what Poppy's favorite color was. Yes. Gotcha. I gotta see the thing is there's gonna be so many freaking animals I have to keep uh, myself <laughs> entertained um, and uh, Poppy just goes black you know sometimes the color of the night sky is very soothing I feel like we so I can see how first. you could pick that totally. we didn't really get an option what happened? She goes, I feel like we should have been able to interview our horses beforehand. <laughs> and I was like, they kind of just showed up. Yeah, black. Like my soul. Well, why do you say that? Why is your soul black? I just... No one, get, no one understands me. I just have a lot of feelings. No one gets me. Oh, oh my god, experience. I have so many <laughs> I'm like, I'm actually, you know, brushing my the horse's mane, kind of like soothing and calm it. And of course, I have Roo probably practicing whatever he's doing on the ground. And I'm just like listening and like, holy moly, yeah. Felix is here too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roslyn's just gonna lay on Poppy's back and like lean over and like brush her mane and be like, just tell me about your feelings. It's okay. I'd love to understand. And, uh,. He's just like, what? So I don't, like, I don't really know you, but I feel like, I, I don't know if you're ready for the kind of darkness that's within my heart. Listen, this is a judgment-free zone, and I will not pressure you to say anything before you're ready, because that is your prerogative. <laughs> but I just want you to know that I'm all ears if you ever need somebody to talk to you. That's uh, that's pretty cool, but still. Okay. Well, you know what, buddy? Here is a flower. It is delicious, and we'll fill you up for a day. Oh, all right. I mean, like, he eats it. He's still like the the horse body language is hard it's horses don't really have a lot of they don't have ways to really emote body language wise but f still seems a little edgy like also i mean like you have let's see your horse is a palomino you said right mhm mm it's fine it's going to say like there's a little bit of like like dark coloring like right around the eyes 
like like horse guy liner. I didn't know Poppy was a boy. No, it's a girl. It's a girl. That's fine. <laughs> There's so just, just she's just got eyeliner, yeah. Okay, well, she reminds me of my teenage years. Yeah, I feel for her. So, uh, all right, Lux, did mm-hmm. you want to ask your horse anything? <laughs> Basically, I would ask like, how were you treated? You know, now all, all this stuff, just like natural kind of. <laughs> Not asking the colors or whatever. Just... <laughs> All right, so you just like how how were you treated and things like that. Yeah, yeah. He's like, bruh, <laughs> everything's awesome. You're awesome. I'm awesome. I just like everything. All right. Your horse is a bro. Yeah. She goes, she goes, she gets it. And he kind of like head like nods and like, you know, the main kind of shakes and there's a little bit of like a hoof stomp on the on the raft there in acknowledgement to Roswin's bro statement. Nice. Um, continue just to finish up and uh, then I look at to uh, ruin. So, mm-hmm. have you been? <laughs> oh, right. I forgot that mm-hmm. there's a badger. Um, it's whatever, you know, I do what I want. I know. And you copy everything I do. Whatever, I do what I want. It's fine. I mean, I don't give a fuck. Everything's great. I'm here. You're here. They got a weird, uh, bro horse, but it's fine. It's, it's, I just, whatever. I don't give a fuck. See any? Yeah, just whatever. And he's like, again, like puffed up, like trying to seem bigger than tiny little badger form is. But <laughs> I just pat him on the head. He's like, yeah, I like that. Adele <laughs> <laughs> uh, is left by this point. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> All right. She's going to go read her book. And how to speak a bizzle. Okay. Make me an intelligence check. Book's hard. <laughs> it's like... You know, you thought that learning a bizzle was going to be tough. Turns out, it's tough. It's real tough. It's going to take a little while. But you're not I completely. I, more days. I was gonna say you're not completely discouraged. All right. Mm. So this day goes by completely uneventfully, and we're the the raft or the the vessel kind of pulls off the side of the river and like ties up at night just to um, just for safety's sake because. Uh, Navigating this by lamplight is going to be a little bit difficult, so uh, they'd rather not risk, you know, running aground or, you know, if there's any trees in the way or things like that. So they decide to pull off for the night. Um, you know, there's people on the boat keeping watch through the night. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, night goes by uneventfully as well. You guys start back up the next day at dawn, continuing on down the river. Um... Yeah, it, it goes uh, about halfway through the trip. There is a tree across the river, so they kind of bring the, the raft to a stop, and they try to get some people to help move this log out of the way. I'll help. Okay. How would you like yeah. to help? Okay. I'll tie a rope around it. <laughs> okay. I'll start. I'll get people to hold on to it and try to pull... Okay. Yeah, I mean, between Lux's strength, your rope, and uh, your your silk rope, that as it gets wet, it's just that much stronger as the knots just cinch down that much tighter. Uh, I want to tell you guys about this rope. <laughs> and the, the able-bodied crew, you guys easily move the log. It takes, you know, about like an hour or so. But you get the log out of the way, and you continue onward. And again, this day, completely uneventful. 
and at night they tie you off um, they tie off the the vessel roll through the night nothing happens third still, dawn still reading the book okay make me another intelligence check today you feel a little bit more intelligent more smarter it's going a little bit better you're like picking up a couple of things you're starting to recognize a sort of synergy between abyssal and celestial like it's not exactly that everything is a direct opposite but you can see correlations between the way some of the wording the structures and things like that because again it is an entirely different text like the characters are different as well so uh you are starting to pick up on some stuff but if you know this is a whole language so it's going to take a little while um cool. okay uh the dawn or dawn of the third day you guys continue onward katie roll me a d12 and a d8 17 yeah nothing happens yeah, it's just end of the third day um you guys with a little bit of the slowdown you had with the down tree um you guys tie off for the night you should be at Baldur's gate at about nine o'clock tomorrow morning so it's one more day if you'd like to try to read some more of your book laura this whole time i've been trying to gain the trust of poppy so that <laughs> she can open her heart up to me okay um so what uh what are you going what do you is there a particular way you're going about this or yeah i'm just i'm just a just being genuine genuinely nice to her and b she's just telling her about how her sister left and then about how her other friend left and she's just like i don't know maybe my favorite color is black now poppy i don't know and he's just like wow would you If I, if I tell you something, will you not tell anybody else? I would pinky promise you, but that's a little bit difficult, so I'm just going to promise you, promise you. Would, would, would you like to hear some of my poetry? Yes! <laughs> I've been missing this so much ever since Phoenix left. Please. Yes. Alright. So, like, it's still a work in progress, but, like, just... Alright. I think I'm ready. You got this. A collection of one million souls enters my coffin, breaking the lock and stealing everything in sight. They rip off my dress and wash off the war paint that was smeared across my face to conceal the agony of my death and to maintain my false beauty. A few days before the worms and maggots eat it all away, leaving nothing but a few mangled bones. That was really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> she says totally genuinely, <laughs> sarcastically like me. <laughs> and he's just like, or she's just like, rather, felt I felt really good to get that out. Thanks. Yeah, Glad you absolutely. liked it. Anytime. And you know what? You keep writing because you really have a gift, Poppy. Wow. Maybe I think I, I think I just needed to hear that. Thank you. Anytime. I'm here for you. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, by the way, Laura, you're you know you're doing well with your book, but like I said. Maybe in like what's your intelligence, by the way? Uh, I have a fourteen. Okay, so you get the feeling that like if you can keep this pace up for like the better part of like uh, maybe half a year, you could probably lock this down. Cool. So that's what she's gonna do then. She <laughs> likes to learn other languages. 
All right. Uh, Light, did you have anything that you wanted to do? Any? Are you looking for horse poetry? Mm. <laughs> no, you, I, you, mean, you... I would probably like you know keep it up as as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I probably would have heard the the horse poetry, and I would keep that to myself, <laughs> um, knowing that this this horse is 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 dark, and yeah. uh, my would horse you... is just high. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, your your horse is just happy, and, you know, everything's all right, all right, all right. It's just great. Oh, God, your horse is Matthew McConaughey. I could. Really? I could. But, because of the horse part. But I won't go there completely. We'll keep it with, like, the, whoa, like, cowbunga. Like, everything's going to be fine. Um, but, no, it's, uh, your horse is just, like, it's a very interesting contrast between your badger, who is just, like, so full of himself, like, you know, yeah, whatever, I'm big, you want to fight about it? Like, I'm so tough, I don't give a shit. And then your horse is just like, whatever, bro. Like, life is a wondrous gift not to be squandered, you know? Wow. I'm not doing a horse one shot. I'll give you guys the pet one shot. Oh, He's the worst. You guys are the worst. I just get the feeling you guys don't even really want to play the game. You just want me to keep making up weird ass animals for you guys to play that instead. I gotta be honest with you, Ted. I wouldn't be upset about it. I, yeah. you know, I, I would like to play this out, but I would not be upset. <laughs> You know how much I want to play in my little pony campaign. <laughs> Listen, I am talking. Scratch, what? scratch everything I told you about the pony I made. I'm gonna be Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. A dark. I dark. am in. I just had another follow-up email with the folks from River Horse, the company that distributes the My Little Pony RPG today. So we'll see where that goes. So, Put who the knows? Show on this stream. I'm like, oh yeah, we we definitely need to give this guy this My Little Pony game. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But okay. <laughs> uh, Dark poetry coming out of pop. Yeah, let's give him this children's horse game. This is why we want to portray it. Yep. Anyway. Uh, so, with that, uh, you guys arrive at the city of Baldur's Gate the next morning at around like i said around 9 a.m the next day so um yeah you guys uh the they'll let you off uh into the city and you are in the outer city uh basically there is a large almost city outside of the main walls of baldur's gate uh, and basically you need to get your way uh, the the vessel is going to kind of skirt around the outside with your horses to uh, have them meet you on the north gate. Basically, you have to walk through the outer city into the southern gate of Baldur's Gate, through the city, out to the north gate, and that's basically where it'll take you, you know, going further north, where you're assuming since the Cult of the Dragon caravan is supposed to end up here in the city and heading north, you'll, you know, eventually you'll sync up with them and, and head north out of the city. So, with that, you guys are now in the outside-ish area of Baldur's Gate, where you are right now. Oh, let's change up the music. We're not... We got some city music, I think. Did I do a Baldur's Gate? I did. I actually have a Baldur's Gate track. It's... Yeah, alright. Um, well, let's go find me a cute cloak with a really big hood. <laughs> what, what time is it? I think I might have missed that. 9 a.m. Okay. Um, How long do we have in the city? Somewhere between 10 and 12 days. Okay. Oh, we're gonna be here for like a long time. Okay. Yeah, the, the they, yeah, uh, Leo Sin and, mm -hmm. and Anthar told you that you guys will be, the Cult of the Dragon is supposed to arrive Kind of hard to say, but with your information, um, 
to you know sometime in the next 10 to, to 12 days they should arrive and then you can sync up with them and head north so you've got some time here in the city first order of business find a tavern slash inn with a bath in the room <laughs> yes all right so where you guys are in the outer city of Baldur's Gate um this is you as you're walking wait, wait, wait. Do yeah I have a house here uh or a place that I live hmm I forgot about that we that's where we said you that was part of your backstory, wasn't it? That you were here yeah. in Baldur's Gate. Yeah. That's right. Um. So, you would you have had a house house, or would you An have apartment just apartment or something? Sure. Let's say you would have stayed at. Uh. What is the best one for you? Uh, probably. Let me take a look, because I can't remember which one. Not that you guys are really going to know one way or another how accurate I am to the actual Forgotten Realms lore of the names of the taverns in Baldur's Gate, but it'll bother me if I'm wrong. So we're going to find out real quick. Um, so it's one of two that you would probably have stayed at where there are apartments upstairs. So... Um, okay. Uh, there is a feasting hall called Helm and Cloak. Um, it is fairly expensive, uh, but it is well rated. Uh, and the upper floor is typically rented out to... Uh, a specific group of knights, the Knights of the Unicorn, but you have a room up there. Sweet. Is it big enough to fit these two jokers? Uh, you could fit them. Um, it's not... Um, it, 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 I mean, it was for you, you know, personally, but you could fit them in there. It's not, like... You won't be super cramped, but it, it's like a slightly night, like bigger studio, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you can all fit there, and it would be, for all intents and purposes, comped. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I'm going to be like, turn to them and be like, so I spent a lot of time in Baldur's Gate. I actually have like kind of an apartment here, if you guys don't mind being a little, little bit tight quarters. Does it have a bath? I would assume so. Probably not in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it, it. I mean, it would have like a like a basin in which you could bathe. It's not like a nice, ridiculous shit that I made up in the last place. Like this is. It's like a normal room. Like there is a way that you a place where you can bathe, but not like something crazy over the top. You ruined that. Unfortunately, not. <laughs> super fancy i'm not that rich <laughs> you look like you're rich but it's your comfy. fancy head thing <laughs> oh, well, well thank you that's what i was going for but you did it well i do there are a couple things i want to get while we're here do we want to settle first or do we want to go run around and see what's available i mean if you just want some place to put some stuff or I can at least show you where it is, so that way we can all meet up there if we need to separate or something. That is a great yeah, idea. Okay, uh, so this would be, and yeah, this would be in the upper city. So there's basically three districts in Baldur's Gate. There's the outer city that you guys kind of went through on your way in, and this was seem it's mostly, and you'll know this, Odella. It's mostly laborers, uh, blue collar types. Um, the conditions vary from, like, squalid conditions to, uh, like, crowded, but comfortable and clean. Uh, this, you guys head kind of close to the lower city, which is all around, like, it, it's hard to tell, but you can see Baldur's Gate from the map is on the coast, and it's sort of, like, if you imagine, like, a crescent moon around that, that's kind of how it designs, like, around the harbor. So the lower city is more along the harbor, and that is where there's a lot of, like, 
uh, everyday businesses, I guess I would say. And then the upper city is the rich, influential citizens kind of live here. Um, this is also where the wide is, which is like this large green grass open air market uh, place. Um, and that is actually like on the edge of that, like kind of bordering between the two, lower and upper, is where Helm and Cloak is located. So again, this is not like a like a tavern, like a bar. This is a big feast hall. So like the downstairs is just like rows of tables where people come to eat, but the food is is pretty high end. Like you would it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to be paying a couple of gold pieces for a meal, but it is a nice. Uh, I didn't say squalid but clean. I said it varies from squalid to cramped but clean. Just to throw that out there, chat. It sounds Mud like puppy. some sort of like now farm table hipster place is basically where I stay above. <laughs> uh, sure. Let's say that. Although it is frequented by, you know, knights. But sure. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do you know? Oh, you've lived in the city for a while, so you know most of the do things. Do I know where that Sorcerer's Sundries place is? Yeah, or? I would I say you would know where that is. That's probably the right place to get to go for what I'm looking for. Yep, um, I will, you know, here, let me just, I'll give you this. What you disseminate to the group is up to you. So, you know, there are several taverns here. This is a fairly large city. It's a metropolis, about 100,000 or so people here in this city. So, uh, between the inside and the outer city. Um, the major taverns are the Helm and Cloak, where you're staying, which is a feast hall. There is Blade and Stars, which is pretty good. Uh, got some solid food there. Uh, the Blushing Mermaid. This is, there's a lot of illicit business happens there. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, there's the Elf Song Tavern, which is an interesting place. It's a decent food, uh, you know, and a, and a decent tavern. However, for years, there was, at night, this strange, hauntingly beautiful, ghostly voice that would sing in Elven. Um, no one knows where the voice comes from. No one knows. It's not malevolent at all, but it's just a beautiful singing voice. Uh, and it disappeared for a while, and now it's back, and nobody knows why. Um, there's the Purple Worm Inn and Tavern. A lot of the merchants go here, and people seeking adventure. There is the Splurging Sturgeon. This is more of your lower class kind of drinking bar for your, uh, your country folk. Uh, and then there is Three Old Kegs, which is very expensive. It's the highest rated place, like five stars on Yelp. Um... But uh, it is... Got a good Zagat re rating. Yes. Uh, it is run by dwarves, but the reason why it's so highly rated is it's mostly for the booze. There is food, but, like, the booze is... You go there for, like, high-quality dwarven ales. Um, there are two two major shops. I mean, there are a ton of, like, mom-and-pop, you know, shop local business places, but the two big ones are uh, the, the Counting House, which isn't really technically a shop. It's a place where you can take out loans, but mostly uh, adventurers use it because they will deal in trading of gems for gold. Like they're your, you know, buy your cash for gold kind of place, but they'll buy your gems and your rubies or whatever kind of weird stuff, art, uh, things like that. Sorcerer's Sundries, as we said, is a place for arcane supplies and things of that nature. And there are several temples here in the city. Um, there are, there's a temple to Gond, a temple to Umberly, a temple to Timora and four shrines, one to Helm, one to Ilmater, one to Lathander, and one to Agma. So that is going down that list in order. Invention, creation, uh, water, the sea, luck, protection, suffering, the sun, and knowledge. So. Um, that's there. what you kind of got going on. So I'll basically kind of like tour them as we walk towards the where my apartment is, and then um, I'm keeping my eye out for a black bow. By the way. Okay. I assume you don't mean like bow and arrow, like a, like a hair bow. 
a hair bow, like for a horse that gotcha. happens to like black. Gotcha. <laughs> um. Okay. Hey, you know, I made my my bed here. I gotta lay in it now with all this mm. stupid Is shit I keep going. Uh, it's pretty good. It's memory foam. Oh, um, nice. so it never forgets all the stupid things I say. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys make it to kind of Odella's uh, apartment, as it were. Um, I tell you what, why don't you tell us, the viewers, and myself included, describe your your apartments so everybody can get a feel of what it's like, Odella's place. Okay, so I'm just going to say these words. It's bohemian chic. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of like draping fabrics. Um, the the bed is very like very neatly made. Um, lots of very like bright, vivid colors. Um, where she could afford it, there's like uh, gold accents in the in the room. But otherwise, very simple. Okay. So you guys Roswin, see this? Roswin runs into the room in circles and goes, "Wow! This is great!" <laughs> And jumps on the bed and ruins it. So I was like, oh, make yourself at home. <laughs> well, how long did you live here? Hmm. See, how old am I? Uh, I'd say like 10 years. Wow, no wonder it looks so beautiful. Well, I, I tried. Is there like any like loose fabrics or is it like all hung with purpose? Uh, no, there's loose fabrics. Rosalind will pick one up and like throw it over like a 50s Hollywood starlet. Be like, I think maybe something like this, but like a million times less flashy, might be good for my future look. <laughs> Can I kind of like try to fashion like a headscarf so it doesn't look super weird? Like maybe that she just has like high hair underneath? Sure, make me a performance chick, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, it's passable. Like, it's pretty solid. I mean, you, you, you know, you've seen a handful of people come through here and not really anybody from Calumport where that would be a more common style. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it doesn't look bad. <clears throat> and, and uh, sure you know, the sure. tail and the wings kind of throw, give it away, but the, her horns look great. Like, well, I mean, we're just trying to hey, figure out that for the moment. Step in the right direction. So done. I show so like in the. I sure I'm, I'm sure I have a mirror. You have a full length mirror. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. I show her. What about that? Does that appeal to you? <laughs> wow, it's like my horns aren't even there, but they're totally there. But it's like less like they're there. We should totally dye my hair. Lex, don't dye your hair. Your hair is beautiful. But we should dye my hair. That can certainly be achieved. I want it to be black, like, like <laughs> my horse's favorite color. Uh, uh, <laughs> when you said that, wow. my uh, my eyebrow just like arched up. Really? I'm going through really? a phase, and the phase is black. Listen, this is an homage to my new friend Poppy, and also to Phoenix. Well, I never got to say goodbye to, and I feel like she would approve. And she gives you, like, sad eyes. So she's like, agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh... Okay. As long as you don't... wear a horse mask, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh! And speaking of that, yeah, you have it. I, <laughs> I pull out my bag. I'm not sure. 
if you want this as a memory. I'm going to be really honest right now, Lux. Mm -hmm. I love Phoenix. She was one of the most talented people I've ever met. Her songs moved me. I was her biggest fan. But that mask is disgusting, and I don't want it anywhere near me. Okay. Thank you, though. You're welcome. It still smells, though, doesn't it? It smells a little bit still. Yeah, kind of. can't wash it out. Um, do you have a window? I do. <laughs> yeah. Does your window have a ledge? Probably not. It's just like a... Yeah, the outside face doesn't have like that. It has a ledge on the inside, but it's just like sheer drop on the outside. We could use it as a form of torture, just like, just like put it on somebody and make them sit in that smell. <laughs> you guys are like, man, she really is taking this whole dark thing seriously. She's like yeah. talking about torture. What's happened to our cute little yeah. Roswin? I mean, that seems like the most extreme form of torture. I'll think about. Okay. Well, do we want to all go together in the city? Or do we want to go to our own places? I'd say stick together, but if you guys have things that you need to do... Maybe we could stick together in the beginning, then... Okay. Don't worry, no more secret pie. I can stick with you guys now. Okay. I mean, I do love pie. We should totally get stuff for pie. Do they have a kitchen I can use here? <laughs> Most likely not. <laughs> no. Do you have a kitchen? <laughs> no. Nope. Like totally plate. buy a pie. <laughs> <laughs> the equivalent of a hot plate. <laughs> it's just me okay. setting sacred flame to like a sheet of metal. <laughs> like to heat up some soup. <laughs> okay. So let's get some pie. We need to get some hair dye. Try to find anything we can possibly find to help with like the tail's easy the tail i just put it under a skirt and it's fine well maybe we should try that was it the sorcerer's yeah i think we should go there first um in case it, it's gonna take a little while to get anything that we might need so okay we might have something who knows okay and we head to sorcerer's sundries all right so you guys head there and um it's you know it's uh do i have oh i think i have shop music too let's change it up from our Baldur's gate music here do we have tavern yeah we'll let that go till i find something better um all right so you guys make your way towards the sh inside the shop and it is fairly well stocked there are a lot of baubles and different jars and different various items and gems and rings and all sorts of random stuff that can be used in all manner of arcane spell casting um and yeah you guys are there it's a fairly big shop so like the counters on the other end as you walk in so because they are things out for us to just like browse or there are some things but most like most of like that. the high end stuff is like in a glass case up by the front but like there are some things out like some fabrics and you know you see like a lot of weird stuff like bits of fur and, and you know strips of leather and different things that are used as all manner of you Stop know casting yeah um okay well, then I'll just look for a, like a shopkeep. I don't know if there's like multiple people. I don't know how big this place is. Uh, there are a couple, but if you head towards the front, um, you see, uh, is he here? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, an elf, uh, a male, uh, moon elf who's standing up at the counter. And he's just kind of, kind of like looking, um, 
Uh, he's got a, like a like a book in front of him. Do I recognize the book? Can I read it? Uh, uh you speak Elvin, right? I do not. Then I do. You recognize that the book is written in Elvin. The front, the wording on the front. Um, I read it. Okay. Um, it says wood carving. And Elvin. Or else sh- Good morning. You. He doesn't look up from the book. Just keeps reading. Oh boy. Ex- excuse me, sir. Nothing. I look at Odell. Just looking, reading the, you know, just got is his. Is on a counter? Is there a counter or, or a bell? Uh, there is, yeah, he's kind of got like, um, he's sitting there, book in front of his face, and yeah, there's like a glass counter in front of him. Oh, there's a glass? Yeah, it's like glass in front, um, yeah, yep, like it's a glass case with, inside you see, uh, pieces of parchment, you know, rolled up and wax sealed, you see... Uh, a really nice necklace. Um, you see uh, a couple of potion bottles, uh, a set of two, you know, platinum rings next to one another, things like that. So, just in case she has to like haggle or anything or make a good impression, I will cast guidance on her. On who? Lux. Lux. She's gotcha. Talk. Okay. <clears throat> and also, really loud. Excuse me. Uh, you do hear a door shut kind of in the back of the shop. And footsteps coming toward you. But the guy with the book doesn't even look so up. So I look... Uh, doesn't even notice where, you there. Yeah. Where I... Yeah, I look where I hear the footsteps. Okay. It's... It, they're still... You, they still sound like they're a way off. Like, because this... You know the store. There's the front of the shop, and it looks it looks like it goes a far way back. So there are footsteps heading your way, but it seems like they'll be here in like a minute or two. Kind of working. It's hard, you know, just listening from the distance. How how, how far is it from me? Like how far is he from? Uh, he is. I mean, he's like over the counter, you know, with the book like this. I I'd so say. Can I reach? Yeah, you could reach and yeah. and grab. Politely, not aggressively, because you know top i just kind of put my finger over and kind of like lift it down so he can see okay so he's like this and your finger like over the top yep uh-huh and uh you know he like drops the book and like jumps up to his feet and is like look of complete shock on his face and he's Sorry, just, just like get your attention and he's just like oh I'm sorry. And, uh... I... I... Gab, sorry. Yeah, you know, I... I... Even though I assume that he can hear my mouth, I'm sorry. And, uh... There seems like a, a, a dawning uh, of recognition, and there is several hand signs that you don't understand. I, yeah, uh, I, I kind of go... I'm... Like, I, I keep shaking my head, like... Mm-hmm. I, and eventually, you see uh, another elf uh, who looks um, who looks fairly similar in feature uh, to the one you were just speaking to. And he says, "Oh, I'm 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 so sorry." And he kind of like looks to his brother, and he signs something to his brother. His brother signs something back, and uh, his brother kind of looks to you and just kind of like bows, you know, uh, respectfully. Um, and he says, I, I'm so sorry, we, it's, it's I, just, well, anyway, um, what can I do for you ladies? Well, first of all, I apologize for startling him. I didn't mean to. It's, he gets caught up in his, his reading, and sometimes he, uh, forgets that we do run a shop, and he, people can just walk right in. Um, but, anyway... Uh, And he kind of puts his hand out, his, you know, lithe, elven hand, and he says, I am Nuar Serlim, and this is my brother Selvik. And he kind of, like, again, and he's signed, well, before he sticks his hand out, he kind of signs it, and his brother picks up, and he Mm kind of bows to you, and then he sticks his hand out to 
I, uh, I take his hand. And he says, Welcome to Sorcerer's Sundries. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Lux. This is Odell and Roslyn. Um, I believe Odell was looking for some items. Odella. Odella. Odella, sorry. Um, I was just taking it. She's like, huh, she hasn't learned my name by now. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, he goes, well, uh, uh, well, what can, uh, what are you looking for? Perhaps we can, um, perhaps we have it, or, or maybe we can procure it, um, because we are, I, I don't need to speak too many, uh, shipments, as we are, um, uh, we are, we, there should be, uh, shipments coming in, in a 10 day or so. Uh, so we've heard so there there may be more but what uh what are you looking for exactly we do have several wares and he kind of gestures again to the handful of scrolls the potion bottles there is uh on the case kind of further to the side there is a a, a particularly shiny looking long sword there is a deck of about 20 cards um uh a hand axe Um, do any of these things by any chance, like, change appearance? Because, like, I'm dealing with a lot going on in, like, the, the head and the back and the the bottom. Um, and really just everywhere. Just, I'm a lot. And I, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get around in the city and have a normal experience when you look like this. Because I can't imagine. Because, um, well, unfortunately, uh, none of these uh, do, I, th I think, exactly what you're looking for. Some of they have, they are all manner of, of magic, but unfortunately, uh, none of these are. I mean, there are some various illusion-based things here, but not uh, for what exactly you're looking for, I, I fear. It's okay. Uh, what do you have illusion based at all? Goes well. Um, and he points to that, uh, the deck of cards, and he goes, There are illusions in that. But nothing for, like, my own appearance. Uh, I mean, I think some of that is entirely based on how clever you can be, but. Um, Della pucks up at the cards that do illusions. Uh, you pick out the cards that do illusions? No, I, I perk up. Oh, I, perk up, I'm sorry. I yeah. Start, like, there are 20, you can count. Over towards them. <laughs> okay, there are 20 cards from what you can count in the little pack. And he goes, hey, I mean, they do create and generate illusions of, of a variety of types, um, but it may, uh, Again, they are limited in their use and will probably not do exactly uh, what you're looking for. Mm. Well, that's really the only thing I'm looking for. Um, do you guys need anything? What? What's this axe? Uh, it's a hand axe, so it's, you know, mm -hmm. like a smaller throwing axe. He goes, this um, finely crafted mithril hand axe from the wonderful smiths of mithril hall is supposedly i'm not much for a, a hand axe myself uh but uh a pristine and just will in your natural ability to hit and chop and other adjectives for using a hand axe will be increased um, it is, the edge is, is keenly sharpened to, uh, the level of which most have never seen. And what about the longsword? Comes this, and he picks out the longsword, and it, it, it is still, you know, it's a longsword, but, um, the handle, uh, uh, the hilt, 
is black and the um and it's sort of in the shape of uh spread out kind of eagle feathers kind of like this and the hand the hilt is the eagle feathers and it comes down and the kind of pommel is the shape of a uh an eagle wow the eagle's head like is the pommel of it and he goes this so they say is a legendary sword from a legendary hero of old it is known as talon can i insight check him sure go ahead yeah seems like he's telling the truth okay just trying to make sure he's not like overselling stuff <laughs> so what does it do he goes well supposedly again the this sword is keenly sharpened to allow one's aim at, to strike true compared to an average mundane sword of similar make and they say that upon a sh truly magnificent hit you can hear the scream of an eagle's cry aid your strike and he's kind of flourishing the sword around a little bit before he kind of like lays it back down on the glass and question you said uh, you're getting shipments well there is supposedly um a group of of merchants so we hear coming in in a 10 day or so we don't know what they'll be bringing but it's the nature of Baldur's gate there are always people coming in and, and heading out in fact uh selvik and i are, are really we we only work here this is not our our passion um but we are, are hoping to head north uh to sell some of our esteemed home made as well as purchased wood carvings um further north so uh we will be setting out i love wood carving can i see a bunch of them yeah there is uh they'll kind of move because you can see like if you move kind of to the side they are mostly like packed up in crates because they're looking to move and these are um the the carvings are just exquisite they depict all manner of you know there are uh p carvings to look like various types of trees and all sorts of different animals and, and uh the you know like a crescent moon and one that's carved to like a mini like little statues of different elves in different positions with bows and swords and scimitars um and uh and he kind of points out to some that are sort of more of like a darker mahogany and he says these were crafted and carved by uh some of uh cormirian elves to the far or to the southeast of here as well as and he kind of points to some that are more like pine and maple um carvings that are these were made by uh by selvik and myself um and we uh you know we are hoping that mixing in our own wares with some of these exquisite uh you know master craftsmen from Cormir, we will be able to uh get a name made for ourselves in the north um rosalind's gonna look closer at theirs and be like to be honest i like yours better you could tell that there's a lot of heart in these as well as skill how much for them he goes well i i mean we were hoping to have our our stock in you know sold off in, into maybe neverwinter or waterdeep but um we could be i mean we're not uh foolish businessmen we'd be willing to sell is there one particular that has caught your eye hmm just gonna look what one that's an archer be like this one kind of reminds me of my sister and he goes ah and he picks up this and there is there's one that they have carved from a, a maple tree and it is shaped it, i mean it, it you can tell from the the carving that it looks to be an elf but in like a crouched pose with bow drawn which is pretty impressive to see 
the tiny little arrow and string like carved from wood like and there is like a string but it actually is made of wood which is like you can imagine that that has to be as someone who's proficient with wood carving tools like this is like the the um, just the sheer amount of stupid amount of time it would take to have this bowstring carved like no you shouldn't do that you should just put a piece of string on it <laughs> because it's way easier <laughs> but um he goes well uh, and he kind of looks to his brother and they kind of sign back and forth um and like he's kind of more like excited emphatic signing and his brother's signing seems more like like calm and like you know there's kind of some shoulder moving and uh, back and forth and he goes well since you are our first customer and they say that the first customer is good luck i will part with this for a mere 25 gold pieces okay she gives him 25 gold pieces and he hands you gingerly these small it's about you know yay big um maple carved archer statue uh and you do get the as you know you guys are talking to him um, going in the caravan, <laughs> he, um, he seems like you get the feeling that this guy, while he may not actually have much to say, like he could talk forever. Like just, he can just words and, and, and speech just flows from this guy. Like nothing. Like he's just. He's not necessarily he's the most loser. art. Yeah, well, not necessarily because uh, he's not the most articulate, but dude can just talk, and like even if he doesn't have anything to say, he probably would still be talking anyway. Like, he's not necessarily trying to win people over, but he likes to hear kind of the sound of his own voice. Like he'll just keep going. So, whether or not you're listening, either. So. Roswin is listening the entire time. I'm sure she is. <laughs> they are going with the ca caravan, though, right? Like that's what. Yeah, they they said like, that they are. Um, and he goes, um, well, yes, we uh, we will be heading north. There's supposedly a large group uh, heading north um, in a in a few days' time. We are still figuring out our provisions and and, and you know what we're going to bring and and you know things of that nature. Do you need any help? Along the way. He might go, be looking for a job. He goes, well, I mean, we uh, we have already picked up a handful of of guards to bring along with us. Um, I suppose we could. It. I, I mean, uh, I suppose one more couldn't hurt. I. I, I mean, you do seem to be a uh, a group of traveling companions, but I. I feel like we have already spent a a sizable amount on. Uh, on security already but uh i'm sure that the three of you if you were looking could easily um there are going to be several other uh merchants traveling north with us as well you may be able to find uh pay uh for other groups we could uh we could probably pay for one of you i mean we're all going to be traveling together so uh it's not like you'll be far from one another would you be willing to take me as an apprentice? Because I would love to learn from you guys, and I can feed myself, and I got my own horse, who I can also feed. Um, well, I mean, we're not planning too much on, on, on doing uh, much work on the road. We are more just focused on this, the travel it, itself, but we, I mean these caravans tend to take a while to travel so there is you know we'll probably travel in our experience for about eight hours a day before we rest for the evening to rest uh all the animals and and there will be a convoy of us so i mean we could definitely talk shop as it were um throughout the day or, or in the evenings as we uh prepare for the next day um so you're more than welcome to but you know, uh as far as what we're really looking for is security if that's something you would like to to do Tell again what, she can 
provide security and learn some stuff from you guys, then it'll be great. Then they go, well, okay. And then, uh, because Roswin, I mean, they've been like, I, he's been eyeing Lux the entire time while you've been saying this, but sure. So, Katie, um, uh, basically what he's going to say is like, show us that you're good at security and I'm going to need you to either make me a persuasion check or an athletics check. Your choice. Well, first I'm going to cast guidance on myself. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Add a d4 <laughs> to whichever roll. Your choice of charisma to try to convince them that you're good for this or athletics to kind of be like, yeah, check me I'm out. Crap at both of them. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I guess I'll just do persuasion. Okay. Them. And you're going to add a d4. All right. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, he says, well, all right, I tell you what. He goes, I, we will hire you out to join our group as both an apprentice and security. He goes, and he kind of signs something to his brother, and his brother signs back, and they kind of smile and smirk, and he goes, well, how does, you said you could feed yourself and your horse, but... It's standard fare for uh, one of our guards to get paid, uh, and we'll pay for your living expenses and your food, and we will pay you eight gold per ten day for the trip. That's a lot of money, I think. Um... He goes, it's standard fare. You've proven to us that... And he goes, well, you, you've just, through your friends and your convincing, we feel that it's only fair that we pay you eight gold per ten day. Okay. So, all right, what? Katie. You're going to have no problem finding somebody else. <laughs> so. Dude, look at you. Jeez. You, Jeez Louise. <laughs> you are going to guess. So remind me, I mean, write this down so you don't forget between um, uh, that you are set up to go with... Uh, Nuar Serilim and his brother Selvik on your riding with their wagon, essentially, get a rate of eight gold per ten day for this trip. Okay. So. Uh, now that that business is finished, how much for this deck? Uh, and they will say, um... Well, uh, he says, uh, and he kind of signs something to his brother, and he signs back. He goes, we think a, I mean, deck of illusions don't always come, they don't come around too often, um, at least here in our uh, employ, but we think 400 gold pieces would be a reasonable uh, expenditure for these. However, if you did decide you wanted to buy... Um, additional things we may be able to give you some sort of bulk discount do you have any objects of holding unfortunately we do not we had one not that long ago about two or three days ago but it's sold and we don't know where the owner is it's funny you know we didn't need to know like? that <laughs> well so what did they look like what did they look like? Uh, they were a... Why not? Because it'll be fun to me. It's a strange looking... A very weird looking elf. And a half-orc came in and bought it. I know them! Well, I know one of them. Well... It's interesting. Um, okay, well, then I see that there's some rings here. Are there anything? What can you tell me about them? Well, the the two rings, the platinum rings that are there, he goes, well, these, uh, mostly as, a, as an arcane spell component, uh, these rings uh, can be used in a warding bond spell to uh, both uh, recipients of the spell would put these rings on their fingers, they're worth about 50 gold each, made of platinum. 
they would allow you to cast the spell. Wait, what? I missed that. It's a warding, warding bond. So it's more of a divine magic than arcane, but, you know, we trade in all manner of magic. So, the warding bond spell requires two platinum rings of 50 gold each, and they need to be put on the, the caster and the person being warded, and that allows you to cast the spell. And there were a handful of ah, okay. potion bottles, um, the, the sword, the hand axe, uh, the, the deck of cards, a handful of scrolls, and a necklace. Oh, and a saddle. What's the necklace? Uh, okay. He says, well, this necklace, which I had a picture of. But I don't have it, so that's that. <laughs> he goes, this necklace, it, they say, when you find yourself at death's door, potentially ready to greet whichever deity you worship, this stymies that and saves you stabilizing yourself to live and fight another day. How much is it? Well, our average market price for one of these when we get them is around 600 gold pieces. What if we put it on hold and tomorrow I come back with some brown dragon's teeth. Well, that we may be able to work out a deal. Those are significantly rare compared to some of these other items. Um, that could probably, we could probably work out a deal. We'll have to investigate and compare the two and see uh, what kind of discount we can get, but I think that it would be more than reasonable. We can totally do that. Do you guys want to do that? Yeah, sure, let's that. just keep looking around first. I kind of want to know more about stuff things here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, the stuff things here. Do you have anything that can cast Identify? And he goes, ha! This! And he says, it's, he picks up a scroll and he goes, it's a scroll of Identify! How funny <laughs> you should ask! <laughs> how, much is, how much is that? He goes, 50 gold! Okay, and you have just one? And he goes, we... Have one d4. Let's find out <laughs> together as a group. Uh, we have two. I'm prioritizing what I actually want to buy. Sorry. Sure. And uh, what potion are there? Um. Uh, you guys recognize some of these. They are um, red, you know, bubbling liquid. Um, they are there are a handful of uh, healing potions. Some are a slightly darker red, as if the color of red were greater compared to the other. <laughs> Help me. Um, so of the kind of standard fare you're used to, they are there are three. And there is one of this slightly darker red. But what's crazy is these are actually contained in not like your traditional like bulbous potion bottle that you're used to. These ones are in... Do I have... They are, for all intents and purposes, in a vial about this size-ish. They're much smaller bottles. Interesting. And just just the healing potion, something else? Uh, well, let's see. Um, yeah, that's it for potions. There still are a handful of other scrolls. There is that saddle, the sword, the axe. Yeah, what's the saddle since I feel like you want me to ask? Oh, you don't have to ask. What's the saddle? <laughs> okay, I mean... Uh... The saddle... 
is it says they say because I can't find it off the top of my head so I'm just going with what I remember and if that's not accurate well that's what it's gonna end up being in the long run uh, they say when you strap this particular saddle upon your mount of choosing that it is impossible for one to be forcibly ejected from that saddle. Okay. We might be back with whatever Rosalind pr promised you. Mm, let's see. Is there Yeah, anything? and if for some reason you get anything, you know, when, whenever? No, we're going to be here for 10 days, right? Ten. Yeah, you're going to be here for 12 hour. days. Correct. For I mean, a hair dye and a black bow still, for sure, though. <laughs> and he says, uh, well, there are plenty of other shops where you could find uh, bows and hair dye, so, you know. Which way? Thank you for the follow, 808. Yay! Um, let's see. You know what? Just for the hell of it, why don't each of you roll me... A percentile. And we'll just see what other wonky stuff they've got here. Thirty-three. Seventeen. Alright, we're all over the place. Uh Okay. There is Hmm. There's a book here. And this book, we're going to come back to. <laughs> it is a magic book, so you say. There is a set of bracers that have the image of a storm cloud on both of them. And there is also a spoon. Wow, what's the spoon? And the <laughs> he goes, they say, this spoon, the magic spoon, when one makes a meal with said spoon, whatever is used to stir or cook or turn, fold, whatever you would do with said spoon, the amount of ingredients you put in will allow you to make more than you normally would be able to. About one and a half times what you normally would make. Odell, oh, that'd be so nice to give to like a soup kitchen, don't you think? Yes. How much is it? Hmm. Well, as much fun as it is to talk about a spoon here in the shop, um, we could probably part with this for 150 gold pieces. <laughs> Think about it. What's the other ones? Yeah, maybe we we'll can bundle it in, Roslyn. We'll, we'll see. Okay. There was a pair of bracers with uh, a, a storm cloud on them. And there was a book all about something. Okay, so what are the bracers? Roswin, what would if you could find a book about anything... What would it be? Tells you, gives you knowledge about anything in the world. Shit. Um. Because you um, rolled the, that one, so. Okay, come back to me. Tell her about the bracers. I gotta think about this. Okay, you were asking about the bracers, like. Mm-hmm. Goes these bracers. They say, uh, when one performs the most precise of strikes with their weapon, can harness the power of the elements. And thunder and lightning themselves. Wait, you can strike some what? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> uh, he told you that basically, when one performs the most precise of strikes, they are able to harness the power of the elements themselves. Huh. <laughs> huh. All right. <laughs> Katie. Uh okay. 
I want to find a book about how to tame birds to send messages. Okay. Uh, the book that you saw, now that you're looking at it closer, has a big embossed image of a couple of birds in flight on it. Wow! <laughs> I love shopping. I thumb through it. Uh, this applies to something that I'd be interested in. It is all about bird training. Training birds, specifically, for at least right this moment anyway, about how to train them to send messages. Wow. Okay. How much for this book? And uh, he's like, that... Uh, uh, 75 gold pieces. Hmm. That sounds totally reasonable. <laughs> what do you guys think? Please stop me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, none of that. None of that. Um, how much is the, the gloves again? He goes, these. Ah, he goes, he looks at you and he goes, you seem like the type who would, who would be willing to run with the power of the elements. I say... 300 gold pieces. Hmm. Okay, Goes so... A minimal price hmm. to pay for the power of lightning. Or thunder, I'm not really sure. The one thing is, are they similar to the ones that things I have? No. Those okay. are a set of gloves. Said... These are yeah. like... These I are like so leather... I hit or something? Maybe. You don't know. Man, those he should know. He, <laughs> he. I mean, he is a shopkeeper. He's. I, I mean, he hasn't put them on and personally tried them all out. He is. You'd also get that the feeling that he is himself, particularly like a magic user himself. He is more of a shopkeep who carves, who makes wood carvings. So he is having. Uh, I mean, you can't really tell too much of this, but he is telling you what he knows. So, so in the meantime, come back yes, can you, can you say the gloves, the book, the necklace, the two scrolls? Right? Yeah. There were other scrolls, by the way, as well, if that interests you at all. Do you want to know nah. what the other scrolls? No. Nah. Okay, so if you could save those. And the spoon? And definitely most importantly the spoon well we could put these aside you say you'll be in again tomorrow yep yep uh -huh. well so add the add the deck in there all right the deck as well wonderful and if you had to say you were gonna bundle all these together how much would you say well there was talk of dragon pots so we'll have to wait and see we may be able to cut that down Okay. All right then. Okay. Well, well, it's been a pleasure I'll, speaking with you, ladies. I'll see you later. Yeah. We're gonna be traveling. This is so exciting. Well, we're glad to have you along. Also, yeah. maybe we should know your name. My name's Roslyn DeForest. And the funny part is <laughs> DeForest. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Um, yes, that's what she said earlier today. I was just confirming. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she will look over at the other guy who can't, who's deaf, and just be like, goodbye. And he's just like, Sitting. yeah. Uh, all right. Did you guys have anything else? You, I'm assuming you guys head out of the shop today? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well. You guys, if you want to keep looking, you can go look. I got to go back to Odella's and start using my mortar and pestle on these shitty looking dragon teeth. I mean, poopy looking dragon teeth. <laughs> so that they're just dust and they can't see which teeth they are. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you just got away. the you no. just got the molars. I got That's the right. ugly molars. I got the Uggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll catch up with you guys later. If you find Pi, though, that would be great. 
Gotcha. We'll look for the hair dye and the black bow as well. Okay, but like the best of bows. Like the bow. I think I, I, think I can handle that, Roswin. You know what? Look at you. Of course you can. Okay, goodbye, guys. <laughs> so then I'm going to run back to Dallas. <laughs> Start on grinding down those teeth and then also trying to uh, just make the rest of the dragon parks parts because we have some claws and uh, some scales just kind of like shine them and stuff so they look nice okay um, so while you're doing that what was your guys plan did you have a particular plan you guys were just going shopping for the best bow and pie yeah a pet, and hair I, dye. I might have to find something for me to disguise myself I mean realistically you could probably just wear a hood you okay. don't necessarily like Fine. I mean maybe Put like, on some clothes. I was going to say. I, I would like to find, like, a one of those, like, long jackets with a hood. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. so you want, like, your your long flowing trench coat, but, like, with a hood? Yep. Okay, uh -huh. like a duster. Are you just, like, the, are you going to button it up, or are you going to be, like, a long jacket with still, yeah, like, a it, bikini? Like, where it's, like, you button up. Okay, whatever. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was just, like, I could also imagine you being, like, I wear a long trench coat with a hood. Open. Bikini underneath. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, Odella, did you have anything that you wanted to do specifically? Uh, I was gonna find that Akin guy. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. You were looking for Akin Celeban. Yes, Akin Celeban. Okay. <laughs> um, you, he is, um, in the, uh, the outer city, so you gotta go back out, um, Actually, I'm sorry, he's actually out the northern side of the wall, um, in the Blackgate district. Um, so down the opposite side. <laughs> yeah. So you can basically find him relatively easy. He has a shop, um, that repair, like a wagon repair shop, and, uh, inside the shop he's got, you know, all sorts of things for making long treks, wagons, rope, netting, grease, chains, you know, wagon wheels, that kind of stuff. Okay, mm. um, uh, I'll be like, hello, Akin. No, he's gonna be a limited guy, I'm not going crazy on a voice. So, he's just like, yep. Yeah. Uh, hello, um, I am a friend of Anthar Frooms, and he said that I should come to you, because you are the best wagon person in town. There goes that. That Anthar's always blowing smoke. But he's a good guy. A little bit kooky, but a good guy. Um, so, were you looking to buy a wagon, or...? Actually, uh... Did Lux, did you come with me, or are you... Yeah, I would have been... Yeah, I okay. would have been with you. Uh, me and my associate are... Heard that there's maybe a caravan coming up in the next couple of days. Maybe, like, ten days-ish. Uh, and we're heading north as well we're maybe thinking maybe we could find work with that and we just thought maybe since you work on wagons and such maybe you would have your nose to the ground or your ear to the ground on jobs coming up he goes well there is supposed to be a caravan in about a 10 day or so heading out of here now i can't give you specific work with any specific merchants but i can vouch for you with all these merchants and that should help give you an easier time and he'll like pull out like a piece of paper and i'll like write down and he, like you see him pull out like a candle and i and he kind of lights it uh the wax and he drips it on and he kind of like puts like a seal with like two pieces of paper and he hands them one to each of you and he goes these should get you uh well some folks they don't want to hire people without any kind of credentials this should help you get in anywhere you want to go. Like I said, I don't know who's leaving and who's staying, but this should help you get in no problem. Thank you very kindly. And these will give you guys advantage on those checks to make to become as guards. So, uh, on your persuasion or athletics check to get work. Cool. Um, I didn't put down that we're supposed to, like, ask him anything. I think Anthar just probably wanted us to get these seals, maybe? Yeah, well, he just said talk to him. He's the guy to talk to, basically. Um, he didn't really give you any specific thing. He just said if you're looking for work, he may be able to help you out. 
So she basically Sorry. did what she needed to do. Cool. Quest achieved. Say, thank you, and I head out the door. Oh, ask him, do you happen to know where people might sell some hair dye and black bows? It's an oddly specific set of things you're looking for, but uh, he goes, yeah, just, you know, any one of the shops, you know, you just take a look, you'll find one. It, it's a kind of a random mixture of things, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. Any fabric shop, which you would know where there's fabric shops, because you decked out your apartment. Gotcha. And I mean, any kind of, you get the feeling that, since apparently you live among a, his, like a hipster bar, apparently now, um, that there's, yeah, there's a fair amount of hair dye cycling around Baldur's Gate at the moment, so you should probably <laughs> be able to find, looking in one of your bohemian shops, if you can't find it there, someone will be able to tell you where to go get some hair dye. Okay. Uh, cool. Thank you very much, Akin. Well, glad I could help. I guess I go look for some hair dye and a black bow. All right, so with that, we're gonna take just a quick break. Um, so we will be back in just a few minutes. I'm gonna down that BRB, and we're good to go. So we're back. Um, you guys, oh, we gotta get some music here. There we go. Oh, uh, nah, let's go back to just a straight up Baldur's Gate track. I like that one better. So what would you guys like to do? It is, we'll say that it's, or you guys went and picked up the, I'm going to say that you guys were able to find the bow and the hair dye easily enough. It'll be like a gold piece for both. Okay. Yeah, uh, I pay back. for it. Okay. Um, because I still need to find a jacket. Hmm. We'll say that in the same time. We'll make it three gold pieces because it's a leather jacket and that's a lot of leather. Okay. And then I would ask for a long black skirt. Okay. Sure. I we'll include that, that in the three. So. Cool. And uh, on our way back, I will ask um, Adela. By any chance, do you know if there's another magic shop around here? Because, I mean, you've lived here for ten years, correct? I do know that. And I will tell you. <laughs> that there is not one except for this one. Unfortunately. Oh, in the big city. Well, right. yeah, yeah, this city's apparently pretty crappy. Hey man, you chose to live there. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I did. No, I don't think you did either, but... Yeah, I mean... Magic items aren't a super common thing in the realms post the Spell Plague, which destroyed all magic as we knew it. But then the magic went when... Mistra, the god of magic, was slain in her human form. Magic disappeared from the realms entirely. She was then reborn, and magic has been seeping in, but most of the magic items that existed are remnants of a long-begotten age. So, there are... Typically, it's rare to even see someone selling magic items because they're so rare that most folks don't even own them. So a little bit of a, uh, I guess, history on the the magic items, as it were. So the fact that they had anything, and it also sort of makes sense that most of the stuff that they had was kind of like small potatoes. You know, there's no, like, mm. Holy Avenger long swords or books that give you a plus two to your strength or plus two to your charisma permanently. Um, Not like there used to be back in the day. I guess on our way back... Do we see a pie shop? You know what? There is one. That's one thing they do have. And it has every pie under the sun. That's the name of the shop. Every pie, pie under, under the, the sun. sun. <laughs> yep. Lovely. So you name it, 
they've got a pie for it. I guess. I guess. He said okay. making this up on the spot. <laughs> yeah, so I head towards there and Nicodella. Right. What kind of pie do you guys want to get? What kind of pies are there? Every pie under the sun. A peach pie. Done. <laughs> Anything else? A chocolate pie. Yep. And I can go all night. How many pies you want to name? <laughs> <laughs> also get a uh, chicken pot pie. Yep, got those two. Ooh. Yep. Those three pies. Okay. Um, it'll come out to three gold. They're pretty that good is pies. Obnoxious. Yeah. Haggle. Would you like to haggle? Yeah, I kind of like. Hmm. I don't know, this one seems a little burnt around the crust. Make me a persuasion check. <laughs> Money. Make me a persuasion check. Shoot, I lost my character sheet. The Belladonna's only haggle when it comes to pie. Yeah. <laughs> one gold, all three pies. Deal. Alright. I pay the man woman. Yep. Man woman. Man it's woman. a uh <laughs> it's conjoined twins. <laughs> you guys They're are super judgy, but <laughs> they that's part of what makes the pies so good is that they work so well in unison. They that's how they can afford it's to like make a magical dance of awesomeness. It is, it's a magical pie dance. Sometimes you know like every so many like every fifth day of a 10 day they do like like a pie show in the center of the outer city where they like make pies live <laughs> add this to the list of things you have to remember that you said we will take rosman <laughs> yep i ask them when their next pie show is two days from now good to know uh -huh. good day. actually it will be in the center of the wide, the open air market, where they're selling their pies, they also do a show to help drive business towards them. Okay, write that They down. take suggestions from the crowd, and then they make a pie. Right there in front of you. It's crazy. So. Head back to the apartment, I guess. Yep. Okay. You guys head back to the apartment. Can we tell Roswin all about the pie show in two days. Yep. Yep. Show of pies, mm. hair dye, the bow. Yep. All the stuff that I, you know, my coat and a, a very long black skirt. Uh huh. That is very reserved of you. <laughs> Just wait. And I actually go ahead and I put the skirt on. Okay. And I put the jacket on, mm -hmm. or the coat. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of like, you know, test everything out. And I'm kind of like <laughs> moving, trying to move like in the, in the skirt. Yep. And I go, I can't. I just, I just can't. I can't. And I, uh, I, I just start ripping the sides. <laughs> right, and you just get a nice slit up the side yeah. of the skirt. On the side. Okay. Uh, okay. It's a little better, I think. Real I can, full freedom of movement now. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was weird all around. I did not like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you decided to show some leg. Yeah, just once mm -hmm. again, Odella looks slightly horrified that she's ripping clothing. <laughs> How much longer? Frozen goes over to the pie, and she's like, "Is this peach pie? Is this peach pie? Oh, yeah. is this baby pie?" <laughs> uh, that's terrifying, Rosalind. Seriously. I'm kidding. I feel like you're reading into stereotypes if you ask for baby pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's like, peach pie is my favorite ever. Well, I like think yeah. Well, you guys get all of your pies and your clothing, uh, and you are able to, in. I'm going to say, because we're going to fast forward most of this, um, you're able to get back to, because we're closing up here for the night anyway, 
to get back to the shop, and you offer up, do you offer up just the dragon's teeth? Well, I would have talked to them and said, do you want to give the teeth to Quaz and the scales, or do you want to save any of it? Hmm. How much scales did we have? We had a Michael Jackson glove-sized amount. I wrote that down. Yeah, we don't really have a lot. Because yeah, no, no, let's... Not let's practice, so I think we wait for the next one to come around. Yeah, and... Uh, how many claws? We have... Okay. We have six claws. Are they good and intact? Yeah, they. those ones were the only ones I did good at. Um... I mean, if, if we want, we can... Let, if you want to, think about it. Maybe part one or two and keep the rest. Well, let's keep one for each of us, I guess. And then we can give the other three. I, I don't need one. Do you want one, Lux? Uh, n no. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to keep one and we can offer up the rest. Okay. Fair. And what were you guys looking to purchase again? You were looking uh, to get it. the deck, the necklace, the bracers, the book. Two uh, scrolls of identify. Two scrolls of identify and the spoon. Right? Sure. Yeah. Was there um, something else? No, I don't think so. No. Nah. Necklace. Deck, okay. Necklace, deck. Uh, you wanted the two scrolls of identify. So that's that. Then you wanted the book, which it was only going to charge you 75. I know, buddy. I'm trying to wrap it up. Uh, I'll say with the dragon's teeth and all of that, we will go for. Uh, so let's go 600 gold pieces for all of that with the dragon's teeth um, ground up and uh, one claw. What do you think? That's cool with me. Is that cool with you guys? Yeah. I'm going to put 200 each. Yeah. Oh, hang on. My volume turned way down. There we go. Say again? Yeah, I'll, t I'll take Rasmus 200 from the party. Okay. Yep, I'll put two in now. Okay. So, you guys will get all of that. Um, and you guys will get to go to the pie show. It's amazing. We dye my hair. You dye your hair black. I want to see the updated art for that. I'm just going to go over it with a sharpie. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll do it. <laughs> oh yeah, just just edit it in Photoshop. Yeah. So. Put a big turban on top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me, I'll find it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I want you to so bad, dude. <laughs> okay. So. And then, like awkwardly cover the wings with like a black tarp <laughs> for a cloak. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lux, you take the necklace and the bracers, right? Um. I'll take the bracers. I think one of you should take the necklace. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think they would look prettier on you, but the bracers or the whatever necklace. Whatever you want to do. Both. Look at her. Uh, fair. <laughs> um. So. The only thing I'll say is it does it stabilize you and like keep you awake or does it just stabilize you? Uh, I will tell you guys when you take the time to take a short rest and identify it. Um, Which happens since we jumped to the pie contest. Yeah, the yeah. Pie dance. <laughs> um, it is a periapt of wound closure. Whatever that does it's in the Dungeon Master Guide. I'll have to look. It is whatever that does. I'm pretty sure that it just, just stabilizes you. Closes your wounds and stabilizes you because I've had that before in a game. I think it also makes you heal more from a short rest. Uh, like you heal like the maximum amount or triple or double the amount you would heal on a hit die spent. Um, but it is attunement. Uh, the oh the book, the book. 
the book is it will teach you one thing every long rest about birds in general. Uh, you chose today to think about, or the very first day, about training birds to deliver messages. So, but it will tell you anything you want to know about birds. The bracers, uh, when you hit, when you get a crit, they're not attunement. When you critical hit with those bracers on, you do an extra 1d4 lightning damage. Hmm. They're not attunement. Anybody who crits, when they do that, will get 1d4 lightning damage added to the overall amount. And the spoon, yeah, anything you make with it makes one and a half times the amount that you like. Um, I will actually probably take the necklace because I fly and sometimes I fall. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Eventually, Lux will be able to circumvent that with the relentless rage anyway, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. um. So, I'll take the necklace. Um... Racers, I agree. Lux should take that. Bird book and spoon. I would like to find a soup kitchen while I'm there. Yep, we could find and... one on the outsides of town. Yeah, and I would like so. to give them the spoon. Alright. Well, I think Wesley's telling me that it's about time to wrap this up anyway. Ah, bud. Yeah. So, we are going to bring this episode of Horde of the Dragon Queen to an end. Um... Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you come out tomorrow night for Out of the Abyss number 20, uh, where we try to find purple worms and or beholders. It's going to be just bad news bears the whole game. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys again for watching. Thank you guys for everybody here who is playing. I'll go over anything else that we need after the fact. So Yeah, he's fine. Don't forget to check out our playlist. Yeah, if you guys want to throw ahead and throw those up there. Um, you can listen on to the character-based playlists. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Bye. Yeah.